Yeah. Good morning. Myself Nishit and I have my colleague Jagdish with me. So today we will be presenting our work we did to basically accelerate the forwarding stack of Linux uh, without going to any user space or without using any hardware accelerators. It is pure uh, software based approach. So agenda is like uh, the objective and challenges, then the proposed solution, then how we basically uh, uh, ported the stateful firewall which is connection tracking and netting on this. Uh, few performance numbers and uh, future work and discussions. Okay. So, uh, so focus here is uh, 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 mainly the Linux deployments as routers and the firewalls. So, which basically has the IPv4 or IPv6 forwarding plus stateful uh, firewalling stuff, uh, and improving the throughputs of that that thing. Because we are mainly in that business that, uh, where we sell these boxes as which kind of use as a next generation firewalls. So uh, there has been a lot of work going like we discussed last day, also today like the net channel, packet shader, Intel DPDK, NatMap. Uh, all of them basically, so the crux or the all of them are basically having this processing techniques to improve the throughputs which basically has the IO batching, pre-allocated packet buffers, uh, packet processing without SKB allocations, forward cache prefetching, uh, either the lockless path or reduced locking and memory map buffers. But uh, all of these frameworks are talking about moving the stuff into user space. Uh, might look good for server applications, but not a practical choice because it requires whole kind of networking stack to be ported on user space. And Linux is already there, so why why to do that? So, yeah. So what we did is like before starting, we kind of uh, so proposal basically is to integrate and enhance this networking stack with the fast packet processing techniques mentioned earlier. Uh, so in order to basically evaluate this, we first kind of uh, uh, did an apple to apple comparison, not fully apple to apple because the NetMap and DPDK sample applications are like the tools or the toys and not a full full uh, forwarding stack. But still we, we compare that, okay, like what are the, what is the difference? And yeah, and that is a definite uh, difference between the uh, performance. Then what we did, did is like at the first step, uh, like the, instead of using the standard RxTX path, we basically use the NetMap rings for receive and transmit. So just just a, a quick overview, like the NetMap rings are basically having the pre-allocated RxTX buffers and pre, um, um, and um, the IO batching capacities. So and uh, to use the NetMap rings, like uh, basically you need to put the any network interface card in NetMap mode. So there is a um, um, a few hundred lines of code required to change driver from a traditional way to put it in a NetMap mode. So what it does is basically it uh, kernel sti uh, still sees the interface as a, as a net device structure, whereas the, the data, the Rx and Tx are basically kind of disconnected from the actual stack. Uh, and, and the way, way the vanilla NetMap work is like on the receive side, the NetMap framework adds a hook in uh, hook NetMap Rx IRQ they say in the uh, driver uh, drivers NAPI callback function and, and from there they basically wake up the user space process and then user space process basically processes all the packets. Where on the transmit side, uh, the application basically fills the NetMap ring and then uh, send it sends and that ring basically send outside. And all the receive and transmit are done in a batch. So they have that IO batching. Okay, so what we did, uh, uh, in, so in the modified approach, like instead of waking up the user space process, um, what we did is like we called the NetMap Rx sync to get the packets in NetMap ring and packets processed in kernel. So at that point of time, we basically fetch all the packets from the from the NetMap ring and uh, process that. And instead of going into the user space, we uh, kept it kept it in the kernel. And uh, now we have, as we have that ring, we have that batch, and we basically uh, run the for loop on that and process all the packets. Uh, only thing we, we like once we have those packet, uh, those are yeah. So that is not no SKB is allocated yet. So what what we did there is we basically modified the routing code in a way that instead of SKB, that routing code is works on the packet data. So uh, to did that we first uh, uh, come up with the idea of having a mini SKB kind of thing which is type def to main SKB, but that uh, basically broke uh, break many of the things in the TCP stack and stuff like that. Then we basically um, uh, created a, a small structure which are required, the only fields which are required in, in the forwarding like the routing uh, DST cache entries, the contract pointers and 
other things and we change the code in a way like wherever it is required like we extract those fields from skb and use the same code so that is logically there is no change in the actual code so routing is exactly the same way we are doing with skb or we are doing with the map packet uh, metadata so those are the changes and on the transmit side um, so just the only the packet pointers are moved from the rx ring to tx rings basically uh, those are the rings we have and once we have the ring filled up we basically instruct the uh, uh, nick hey you you send the packets out and and uh, once the nick uh, sends the packet there is basically no need to handle the uh, callback functions because it is not required to basically not uh, deallocate or free any memory there okay so this is just an high level diagram so from the napi pole that is netmap rx irq netmap rx sync and from the rx sync now we have the uh, batch of packets for each packet uh, we call basically the do fast path function and second thing we implemented here is like so uh, let's say in the napi callback you get the 64 packets and on those 64 packets like example like there are two output devices uh, 32 packets uh, going to eth1 and 32 packets going to eth2 so instead of sending each packet we basically created a device wise batches and we basically uh, send those batches directly on to the cards so here for each output device we basically uh, send the 32 packets and uh, packets in the batch uh, in the tx path okay and this is this is basically the high level do fast path function so uh, it first does the, uh, the all the sanity checks we have in ip receive function so ip receive is just modified in a way like sanity is decoupled from main, main IT, I, ip receive so we we call it from two places then standard route lookup which is ip input route slow uh, then uh, as if if there is a if if packet is for destined basically for the control path packets or to access the device uh, then we uh, we do the normal workflow where we allocate the skb and do the native receive skb on the other side if it is a forwarding path then we basically do the normal thing the ttl decrement a neighbor lookup and if if there is an, a neighbor already present in the arc cache we basically do the mac uh, mac update and transmit using the batch mode io uh, and so this so this neighbor lookup route lookup are all all the kernel functions uh, nothing offloaded or nothing changed anywhere okay and this is so as i mentioned so as we are in kernel so kernel stack is still used for the packets which are either kind of not supported or ported or fast path uh, or either not required to be on fast path like the control path access, uh, access or the the, pro pro the protocol which are by nature are not that fast like the r packets or the fragmented packets where we have the current limitation that we are not basically able to queue the packet somewhere but yeah so so we we have that model like if you are not uh, supported on the fast path you basically simply go to kernel for that and just for the control plane traffic um, uh, so this is again the vanilla vanilla netmap Im implementation where uh, where you have a netmap transmit function uh, uh, for the for the driver specific stuff and so this function is basically modified where we basically copy the skb data into the netmap ring and then basically do a transmit so this is still a per packet but as we don't have that use case of uh, so many packets coming from the stack or uh, moving on uh, moving to the stack it is uh, okay with our use case okay and one more technique that we used here is like uh, the forward cache prefetching so when we go through the sample applications of dpdk uh, they basically use the forward prefetching uh, where uh, so now we have a, a batch of packets in netmap ring so what we did is uh, like for so if we have the n packets in napi napi callback like we basically first fetch the three packets and then uh, while we process the first packet we instruct uh, a prefetch for the fourth packet so by the time we basically process the packet we have uh, the next packet in the cache already so this helped significant like we tested uh, on x86 and x86 64 boxes where uh, it it definitely increased performance by a lot where uh, ddio is not supported uh, ddio boxes with the ddio supported is uh, having kind of no no throughput gains due to this because ddio itself sends a packet to l2 cache when it receives yeah so <clears throat> so now we have that basic setup where you have a code and you have a framework ready what next we did is like the way we basically converted the routing code we basically again converted the the connection tracking and the netting code on this on the same lines 
So, uh, so what we did is like from the do fast path function, we first uh, did the connection connection lookup, and and now the the connection lookup is not having any central lock, so it is scaling very well. Uh, and if what so so the idea is like we did the connection lookup. If you if it is the first packet of connection, you continue the journey into the kernel stack where you have all your kind of uh, the firewall rules or the IP, the rules in in NF tables or IP tables or using the IP sets. And then basically uh, uh, with the con mark target, uh, uh, you set the, some some mark. Just just an idea is like you set the fast path fast path mark to the to to say that okay the all all subsequent packets will be kind of processed by the fast path. And then for all subsequent packet again like uh, once we did the connection like once we do the connection lookup. So we we got that flag and if it is in said like this is in, in the fast path we basically process that. Packet via fastpath, uh, the do fastpath module. Yeah, and one more thing we added here is like uh, Florian proposed a patch where um, where like once you so now uh, before going into the details like uh, uh, so uh, once we on the fastpath now we have two lookups. One is the contract lookup and one then one is the route lookup. So to avoid two lookups, we basically use this patch where uh, only the f like on the first packet uh, the routing BST entries are, are cached in the contract, and then subsequently you are not required to do the routing routing lookup. So when you do the contract lookup, you have those entries entries ready. I think this patch is not yet upstream, but uh, I request uh, Florian to basically push it because it actually helped a lot in in this case. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, so uh, I'm not sure this is visible good enough or not. But yeah, this is again the same. So sanity checks. Uh, so contract lookup, uh, and then if if con mark is set, then we basically follow the standard path just by but but not uh, going to go uh, not um, kind of going into the SKB path. Rather, it is a more straightforward path with calling up the same functions. And uh, if not, then is it? Uh, that is the normal path we are following. Okay, so here are some some performance numbers with these changes. So so res results well taken on a single core. So these are the single core CPU E5 2680 2.5 gigahertz and with 210 gig ports connected. And with everything like we are almost getting 5x time throughput increment just via software changes. Not no any offloads or so one one more point uh, worth noting here is like all the GRO, GSO, all the offloads are disabled here. It is pure without any offloading uh, stuff. So it so on the every packet size we are getting almost five years time throughput for the connect uh, for the stateful firewall, not even the routing. And as it is a single core with just this 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 Z1 CPU, it I remember like this is a 12 core CPU. So with just a single core we are. Uh, on 5 and 12 MB bytes of packets, we are easily reaching 100 gig on on this on this CPU with the stateful firewall. Yeah. So future work. Uh, currently, we are, as I mentioned, we do not have a packet buffer holding support in NetMap Ring. So that's why we and 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 that's why uh, all the use cases where we are required the queuing, we are not able to use it. Uh, currently, we are doing. Uh, data copies when sending packet to kernel network stack because those are the two different things. Uh, so I had a word with Chesper and it, it is page pool, not the queue mem pool, uh, to basically avoid the copies between them. Uh, so XDP is uh, definitely a possibility. I, uh, we basically remove. Uh, we we will be seeing like whether we can use we can remove the netmap which is not uh, the mainstream kernel and maybe we can use XDP here and have have this running. Uh, so that we can have that netmap uh, out and like the fast path porting for bridge uh, and basically the bridge and the transform are the first because that that will be a so we we expect like that will be definitely gaining the ipsec or the transform uh, transform stack and uh, on the bridge path yeah so that's it questions so uh, if i understand correctly so basically you have light metadata as uh, packets coming into the stack and then you're using the existing FIB lookup infrastructure to look up the route and make decisions about how yep. you forward things out to the network. Yep. Thing. 
So long term, one vision I have of how, how we're going to do all this is, is exactly as you kind of allude to is perhaps use XTP for this. Okay. Uh, then we get the, 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 the area we get into discussion at that point is how do we share the tables between uh, the in kernel memory state for the FIB lookup tables, the neighbor cache, what have you, and the BPF maps that the BPF programs can access. And this is a, this is a far reaching issue, uh, and it's been hit already by the people who try to, uh, Tom Herbert and his uh, team trying to do ILA routers using XDP. So, this is kind of like an area where we need to do uh, yeah. investigation, figure out what the best model is. Yeah. And this gets even more interesting once we push BPF into hardware, like the NPS talk that just happened. How do we synchronize state between the kernel and the, uh, the BPF map that's sitting in there running XDP all the time? So I really appreciate the work you did and the numbers you gave because it kind of gives us an idea of where we can go with this yeah. and uh, what's, what's, uh, what's possible. And that's always useful information. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dave. Any other questions? Uh, uh, this is a nice work. Just using netmap uh, uh, nick, nick stuff uh, within the kernel, right? Um, yeah. Why you don't use uh, the the bar LM switch is in the kernel? Uh, the netmap repository the, has a patch to the open voltage kernel data path acceleration. So basically, it the, uh, it uses uh, the in kernel open voltage data path. It is pretty similar to the the fibro cap uh, routine within the kernel, um, but. Instead of the director using netmap nick, it uses a software switch with netmap. Okay, okay. so the using that, uh, for example, like think about some series of packets that are coming into the nick. Okay, mm -hmm. then the first packet goes to nick this nick, next packet goes to nick this nick. Okay, the next next packet again goes to nick this nick. Okay, so I think if we, you do like this, I think uh, every time access accessing to particular nick, you have to obtain a log and. Uh, uh, the kicks DNA and unlock it, something like this happens, right? So if you use the software switch the, of netmap, mm -hmm. the, you can the group packet beforehand for each destination, then the, you can amortize the cost for device access and locking. So the, I recommend using that part. So I guess we, like, uh, we used in the same way, but I got that approach. Yeah. But ultimately, like, we are having those rings and we basically... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, combine the packets with for the each output device, and then basically transmit in the batches. Okay, so the base case uh, you use the group packet before yeah. hand. Okay, I'm not it. sure it is already there in NetMap the recent. Yeah, NetMap, exactly. So the why you don't okay. use that okay. code? So okay. <laughs> anyway, okay. let's okay. talk later. Thank you. Okay, no more questions. Yeah, thank you. Coffee is uh, available at the outside room.